Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. In this video, so let's discuss a question on oxidation of fatty acid. Let me uh, quickly read this question for you. A four month old child presents to the physician in a hypotonic state. The child has previously had a number of hypoglycemic episodes at which times blood glucose levels were between 25 and 50 mg per deciliter. Blood work shows low levels of ketone bodies during hypoglycemic episodes. Increased urine carnitine levels were found. Free long chain fatty acid levels were elevated in the blood but no acyl carnitines. Elevated levels of long chain dicarboxylic acids were noted. A liver biopsy shows elevated levels of triglyceride. A most likely defect is uh, in which one of the following. Now the choices that are given here are primary carnitine deficiency, carnitine acyl transferase 2, medium chain acyl CoA dehydrogenase, long chain acyl CoA dehydrogenase, uh, secondary carnitine deficiency. If you take an overall look at the choices that are given here, all these choices they are either related to carnitine shuttle mechanism or beta oxidation of fatty acids. That means this question it belongs to oxidation of fatty acids. Now let's see what are the important points that you really need to, to uh, take in this particular case time. So this particular child has got uh, hypoglycemic episodes. You got to take a note of that hypoglycemic episodes. And uh, during that time, the blood glucose level was uh, between 25 to 50 milligram per deciliter, which is clearly hypoglycemia. So because fasting blood glucose, normally it is around 70 to 99 milligrams. So this is a clear hypoglycemia here. And look at the blood work, so low levels of ketone bodies during hypoglycemic episodes. Normally during hypoglycemia, so body will respond by making ketone bodies, especially oxidation of fatty acids will go on. And uh, we expect uh, ketone bodies to be a uh, little elevated uh, during hypoglycemic condition or fasting condition. So here ketone bodies are low. So basically this is a hypoketotic hypoglycemia. That is the key word here. So uh, author of this question is trying to uh, trying to give hypoketotic hypoglycemia uh, condition here. Now furthermore urine uh, carnitine levels were found. So there is increased levels of urine carnitine. This you got to take a look at. So urinary carnitine levels are increased. It means there is a wastage of carnitine in the urine. Normally you don't uh, generally see increased levels of carnitine in the urine. And also note that free long chain fatty acids are elevated in the blood. So uh, long chain fatty acids are seen in the blood, elevated levels, uh, but no acyl carnitine. So acyl carnitines are not seen. And also furthermore, elevated levels of long chain dicarboxylic acids are noted. Now. So some of the points that we need to take from this uh, case stem is uh, non-ketotic or hypoketotic hypoglycemia. So hypoglycemia with uh, low ketone body. So hypoketotic hypoglycemia. Whenever we look at hypoketotic hypoglycemia, we got to think about two things. One is there can be a defect in carnitine shuttle mechanism or there can be a defect in beta oxidation. These two conditions, defect in beta oxidation or uh, defect in carnitine shuttle mechanism for shuttling of long chain fatty acids into the mitochondrial matrix could lead to hypoketotic hypoglycemia or non-ketotic hypoglycemia. Now, a uh, urinary carnitine levels are elevated, uh, long chain fatty acids are elevated in the blood and uh, no acyl carnitines are found but uh, long chain dicarboxylic acids are found in the blood. So. Now there are three, uh, four things here. One is uh, elevated levels of carnitine in the urine. Second is uh, long chain fatty acids are elevated in the blood and no acyl carnitines elevated here in the blood and long chain dicarboxylic acids elevated in the blood. Now, one of the point that you need to take here is uh, no acyl carnitines elevated in the blood. So uh, note that whenever there is a defect in beta oxidation per se, defect in any enzyme that are involved in beta oxidation, 
will lead to elevation of acyl conitins. I'm going to explain you how exactly why exactly acyl conitins will be elevated in the blood whenever there is a defect in beta oxidation process. Now, since there are no acyl conitins in this part elevated in this particular child, that means there is no beta oxidation because whenever there is a defect in uh, beta oxidation process, there will be elevation of acyl conitins. Since the case stem clearly says that there is no elevation of acyl conitins here, that means it is going to rule out a defect in beta oxidation. That's why we are going to take out medium chain acyl CoA dehydrogenase enzyme which is one of the enzyme in beta oxidation process for medium chain uh, fatty acids and also we are going to take out long chain acyl coa dehydrogenase enzyme from the um, choice because uh, long chain acyl coa dehydrogenase is one of the beta oxidation enzyme. Now we are between uh, choice A, choice B, uh, choice E. So we are between those three choices now. So let's rule out uh, which is the uh, uh, let's rule out two choices and uh, go for which is the correct choice among three now so before uh, getting into the details of this question just to have a background about uh, conitin shuttle mechanism so you can take a look at my uh, video on conitin shuttle mechanism uh, so that you will understand this question much better uh, let's go to the first choice here primary conitin deficiency Note that the primary conitin deficiency is uh, because of a mutation in a protein called SLC22A5. SLC22A5. This is a conitin uh, transporter which is helping in the transport of conitin and different tissues, uptake of conitin by the tissues. Uh, it needs SLC22A5. So, deficiency of SLC22A5. Uh, lit, uh, could lead to a uh, decreased uptake or no uptake of conitins from the blood. So blood levels of conitins will be elevated and when the blood levels of conitins are elevated that means they are going to appear in the urine because uh, kidney is also not reabsorbing conitin from the renal tubules. That means uh, urinary conitin levels will be elevated. So as you can see here increased urinary conitin levels were found and also uh, free long chain fatty acids are elevated and uh, long chain dicarboxylic acids are elevated. So that means uh, in primary conitin deficiency, uh, whenever there is a defect in uh, conitin transport or SLC22A5, so overall there will be deficiency of conitin in the tissues. That means uh, when the conitin is not um, available sufficiently in the tissue, so the conitin shuttle mechanism which is allowing long chain fatty acids into the mitochondrial matrix so that will be down that means your long chain fatty acids cannot go into matrix of the mitochondria and thereby beta oxidation is not going on because of this what happens uh, free long chain fatty acids they will come back into the blood and their levels will be elevated and then some of the free long chain fatty acids will be diverted into endoplasmic reticulum and thereby they will be converted into long chain dicarboxylic acids. That is why in primary conitin deficiency, so you can see elevation of urinary conitin levels because it is not reabsorbed by the kidney is, uh, that will lead to decreased beta oxidation process because um, uh, conitin shuttle mechanism is not going on properly. So that will lead to elevation of long chain free fatty acids and also elevation of long chain dicarboxylic acid. So at this point in time, primary conitin deficiency makes an answer here. Anyway, uh, before we make sure that this is the correct answer, let's rule out uh, uh, B and E now. So conitin acyl transferase 2. Now the conitin acyl transferase 2, it is uh, located in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So the job of this enzyme is to uh, convert fatty acyl conitins back into uh, fatty acyl CoA and uh, release the conitin molecule. So whenever there is a defect or deficiency in conitin acyl transferase 2 and that will lead to a decreased conversion of fatty acyl conitin into fatty acyl CoA. That means uh, there will be elevation of fatty acyl conitins that will appear in the blood. So the blood levels of fatty acyl conitins will be elevated 
along with the free long chain fatty acids. So in this particular child, no acyl carnitines are found. That means it is going to rule out carnitine acyl transferase 2 enzyme. Now coming to the secondary carnitine deficiency. Now the secondary carnitine deficiency is because of a decreased or defect in carnitine biosynthesis in the liver. Any enzymes that are involved in biosynthesis of carnitine can be deficient or it can be because of liver failure where carnitine synthesis is decreased in the liver or it can be because of deficiency of essential amino acids especially lysine and uh, methionine because lysine and methionine is used in carnitine biosynthesis or it can be because of hemodialysis uh, in renal failure because hemodialysis process itself causes decrease in carnitine. That means in secondary carnitine deficiency you will see decrease in the blood levels of carnitine and that means you don't see elevated levels of carnitine in the urine because there is a overall carnitine deficiency there. That is why secondary carnitine deficiency it can be ruled out in this particular child because you see elevated levels of carnitine in the urine. So going with all this, so the correct answer or the most uh, accurate answer for this particular uh, uh, case stem is a primary carnitine deficiency. So that's all about it and uh, I hope you understood this question and I hope this video has uh, helped you in understanding uh, fatty acid oxidation, how that the concept can be asked as a question thanks again and uh, see you in my next video